Welcome to this edition of AFMC. I'll tell you how I got better. I'm glad to be here. But a mission to deliver it. Well, I think that we're, we're talking, we're going to talk about everybody's. Arkansas is the second highest prescriber. Welcome to AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Thank you for joining us. Today I have with me Dr. Bradley Diner, and he is the medical director for the Arkansas Medical Foundation. Dr. Diner, thanks for being here. Good morning. So tell me about the Medical Foundation. What is it? So the Arkansas Medical Foundation is the is Arkansas's state physician health program. And it's grown out of what was originally just a committee for the Arkansas Medical Society called the Physicians Health Committee, which was created to help intervene and help um, impaired doctors um, from a number of causes. But it, we grew and, um, and developed this foundation, which is now the acting entity, uh, the Physicians Health Program for the state of Arkansas, um, and then we are part of a larger national organization called the American Federation of State Physician Health Programs. Uh, there's, there's a physician's health program in almost every state. Uh, our, our mission is to ensure that physicians are safe and that the patients in the state of Arkansas are getting safe treatment. And when you say safe, does that mean addiction issues, recovery, all the above? Right. Um, it, what started out was mainly substance abuse. It's, it's grown a little bit over the years, but uh, it's the, the main conditions that impair physicians are the same conditions that impair everybody. Um, but we're such a safety sensitive organization, uh, a group that that we want to ensure that our, that our patients are safe and they're getting safe treatment from the physician. Substance abuse, boundary problems, such as having intimate relationships with patients, um, cognitive problems. Uh, we see older, <laughs> this is an issue today for <laughs> across the political spectrum, but older physicians that may have cognitive disorders. Um, and, and other psychiatric conditions that, that may limit um, practice safety. And you know, you can't take care of others if you don't take care of yourself. Well, and that's exactly right. And, and physicians are incredibly adept at ignoring their own problems and taking care of others. It, it's it's uh, something that just develops throughout residency. We see such horrible trauma and we take care of so many patients that a lot of times the only way to, to do that is to deny your own issues and, and focus over here. And sometimes that, that process gets overwhelmed and becomes a problem. So tell us about your work. You, how did you get involved with the foundation? You practiced for a long time? I've been a psychiatrist, a boarded psychiatrist in the state of Arkansas for over 35 years. I've had uh, I've done a number of different things in, under that umbrella, but, um, uh, but had a, a private practice for many years. And uh, during that time, I also became boarded in forensic psychiatry. So I have been called upon to do evaluations of professionals for fitness for duty. Uh, and that led to my connection here. And then they hire, I, I was hired as the medical director here roughly 15 years ago. Or so. so you were on the front lines of seeing this firsthand of how this affects physicians across the state. Well, this is, I have seen, I've evaluated a number of, again, safety sensitive positions, police officers, clergy, um, nursing, I'm called upon by the nursing board frequently, and then physicians as well. So what do you want the healthcare community to know about the foundation? What is the first step? So we've, we've expanded our scope to include not just physicians, but healthcare professionals in general. And so we, um, we're actively involved with not physicians, dentists, um, optometrists, respiratory care providers, occupational therapists, PAs. The nursing board has their own organization that's the nursing 
uh, alternative to discipline program, but, but we run this, the Arts and Medical Foundation, and, and we cover the rest. But we want uh, impaired healthcare professionals to reach out to us voluntarily and allow us to help them find the treatment that they need, get certified that they're in fact safe, and then we will go on and monitor them for anywhere from a one, or one year to, to life, sometimes the sort of standard contracts five years, where we'll um, ensure that they're doing everything that they need to do um, in order to, set, to stay um, well and to stay safe. There's a legislated act called the Medical Practices Act, which gives us the authority to do that in a confidential way and to not notify the medical board and to, uh, as long as they're doing everything that we've asked them to do and we can guarantee their safety, then they won't get in trouble. So there's a real carrot out there for, for them to do what we ask. And so, and it's usually what may seem laborious at first is, is really not. It's, and, and most physicians who come to us, almost all after the end of a contract will say, we help save their life, not only their livelihood, but their life. Now, right now we only get about 50% of those that we monitor come from from Contus voluntarily. The rest are referred to us by their disciplinary board. And the medical board calls upon us all the time to help them um, make those determinations about, about doctors who get sent to the board for some sort of disciplinary action. Or there's someone who's applying for licensure who has a past history of um, substance abuse or past history of disciplinary problems and they'll ask us to make recommendations. So we work with the board, we have a good collegial relationship with the board, but we're not the board. And we don't want our doctors to go to the board. So my, the thing I would say is if you have a problem, to reach out to us before you get in trouble and let us head that off um, and, and get you the treatment you need, but also guarantee, because um, there's, there's a lot of statistics out there, but a doctor who's been monitored by the foundation is significantly less likely to ever have a malpractice lawsuit uh, because they're, they're such under such scrutiny doing, to do what they do that, that um, they frequently are, are even safer than if they'd never been monitored. So, um, but, but again, we we have all these, we, we, we're out there, we're trying to, to um, get the word out, but we only, right now, we monitor actively about 150 doctors, and it's like we were talking about before, we may be missing five, six, seven hundred that have particularly substance abuse issues uh, that, that are in the state. The medical board has even helped. They, they put an attestation question on your license renewal that says you have been to the you have been to the website of the Arkansas Medical Foundation and acknowledge that you've read it. They want they want that too. They don't want to get involved uh, if they can help. So uh, even though physicians apparently check that off, a lot of them don't really realize what they're checking off. But but we do have a website out there, and we we do want. It's full of information we want physicians to see. The website does offer a number of resources and information for physicians. Do you want them to go to the website, review that, and then reach out? Any way that they want to. They, they can call. They can send us an email. They can look at the website. They can make contact. But um, we, will, we have a, a staff that's monitoring all that constantly, and we... We, but there is good information about what we do. And the, the main thing is we want people to know that we're, we are not, we're not about discipline. We're about rehabilitation. We're about safety. We, 
we want to help them avoid getting in trouble. Um, again, we, we get referrals, you know, from hospitals, mm -hmm. from physician partners, from nurse, uh, nurses that they're working with or other staff members that they're working with, from disgruntled spouses, from any number of sources. And, and we'll take all of that and, and reach out sometimes and, and call that, that physician and say, you know, there's, there's a complaint out there and, and come talk to us. Um, and we will do our best to, to make, we make that a voluntary contact to, so that they avoid before that complaint gets, gets registered to the board, for instance. Uh, but we, uh, what we want and we require the doctors to, to come voluntarily on their own and do that. Now, I will also say that, uh, so we get some referrals from hospitals the Joint Commission require, uh, the overseas hospitals, requires that every hospital have a physician health program. Mm -hmm. Hospitals can use us to fulfill that obligation. So we also want this knowledge to go out to hospital administrators and, and credentialing committees that, that we are out there and they can use us to help uh, fulfill their own responsibility of having a physician's health program without actually doing it. Um, one of the things we run into a lot in the past, which is unfortunate, but some of the small hospitals in the very, in the uh, rural Arkansas, they don't want to lose the doctors that they have. And they're af afraid that if they turn in their doctor, they're not going to be there. Well, the, the liability for having an impaired doctor working is much higher than what you would have uh, for sending Get somebody to first treatment. before that it gets to that. But typically what happens, so they contact us, they agree to come in, they, they agree to, um, to our services. I'll do an uh, independent evaluation myself and, and meet with them. Uh, and we have a program director, Rebecca Gaston, who also works with me and, and has a lot of individual contact with, with anyone. We, We'll make an initial recommendation. Now, sometimes that's going to be a more comprehensive, full evaluation, and that's only done at um, facilities that specialize in physician um, evaluations and treatment. None are in Arkansas, but there are some in the contiguous states, and these are um, physician health programs uh, that do will do a comprehensive two or three day assessment which will include everything from not only a psychiatric evaluation but an addiction evaluation they'll have a, a, a medical evaluation laboratory tests they'll have collateral interviews they'll have psychological or neuropsychological testing and all of that is is consumed in oftentimes a 20-page report with recommendations for treatment. And then we'll help ensure that that treatment plan uh, gets followed because it's not until they do all that that they're considered safe to practice. Mm -hmm. And they'll get a stamp of safety. And sometimes it's just go back and we think you're okay or go back and have outpatient treatment and, and do this. Or sometimes it's it can be as much as three months of residential inpatient treatment. That's not an unusual length of time for someone who's, for instance, a very impaired uh, alcohol dependent physician. So following that initial treatment then, they're sent back to us with this saying they're safe to practice under monitoring and we'll, we'll put them on a contract and that contract uh, can be any number of things that are recommended but oftentimes it includes random drug screens. It includes individual therapy. Uh, it may or oftentimes includes 12-step meeting attendance like Alcoholics Anonymous, um, and then involvement with, in groups with other recovering healthcare professionals. Uh, and as long as you follow our monitoring guidelines, and most do, uh, they're 
is very little remission um, and uh, or relapse rather and and uh, the board never finds out about them their their practice is only briefly limited by the time they might have been in inpatient treatment if, if that was the recommendation now the other problems like boundary issues you know that there are other specialized programs just for that and again we um, we don't uh, doctors are very afraid that it's so easy to fall into that situation and we can help you extricate yourself from that successfully and, and figure out how to uh, manage the condition that, that got you there. So. Well, it sounds like the foundation does a, a lot of work that can change the trajectory of a physician's life or healthcare provider. I mean, it, it sounds amazing. Well, there's no question, and we have tons of success stories. Now, obviously, uh, doctors or anybody do, don't want to be identified a lot of times. Some, some don't mind. Some are out on the front lines doing the very work that got them into trouble. But uh, they will tell you that while it was difficult for them, the, the recovery process and the monitoring is what salvaged their, their occupation. Well, Dr. Donner, thank you for talking about the foundation today and all that you do. I appreciate it. Thanks. And again, I hope people will reach out if, if they need anything. And, um, we are uh, we are available around the clock. So, well, thank you, and that's it for this episode of AFMC TV. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.